of the Forgotten Devlog, September 2020 through, well, it was supposed to be February 2021, but it took months to finish this, so there's some newer stuff as well. I splurged a bit on a Christmas present for myself and bought the Piano Tech VST, which I'll be using for a lot of the game's music. Here's a work in progress track with the new VST. I added more trees to the background and tweaked the sway to look more natural. It's subtle, but the parallax layers within each tree also move to add more depth. Holding up and down while standing still allows the camera to pan up and down. The sun position can be set on a per level basis to allow for perfect positioning on a given scene. I also reduced the camera field of view from 40 degrees to 26 degrees to minimize the parallax problems and help maintain the illusion of the 2D aesthetic. Fog color can be specified on a per level basis. The first boss now has a dramatic landing animation, and he punches down properly. The shield flickers when power is disrupted and has improved visuals and sounds. The camera follows the sparks when the rightmost power source is destroyed, to hopefully make it extremely obvious what the player needs to do next, since there was some confusion in the past. The crystals are destroyed when punched, and I've started first pass animations on the robot shutdown and fist equipping. The robot fist no longer blocks the player from uncrouching, but I still keep the collision enabled if the player is above the fist, so you can jump off of the fist if you time it just right and feel like a ninja. I've iterated on the standing on edge animation and added more platform assets and details to the level with lasers. There are also visuals indicating which cables are active when you flip the switch. Elevator platforms now have an interaction trigger, so you can control when they go up and down. Added cables, junk, and other details to make the slums level look more lived in. There may even be some easter eggs. I've smoothed out the death to respawn camera transition. The enemy laser now has a dissipation effect. I've tweaked the spiderbot scale, added laser sounds, and added an animation tree to closer approximate the leg position so IK behaves better. The missiles have been tweaked to be more fun to dodge as well. When the character punches down after a long distance, she plays a spiral animation. There's also an animation for the punch down landing. I've tweaked the horizontal camera limits so they don't look so swimmy. Wall jumping is more intuitive now. You don't have to aim away from the wall to jump, and I've figured out other ways to fix undesired wall jumps. Built new platform assets for this level, and made a number of tweaks based on feedback. Also improved the background quite a bit. Pipe corners used to be really problematic, but I've made it so you can wall hang on angled, unwalkable surfaces to make them easier to navigate. Started on a log loader enter animation. The character outline scales based on the camera zoom. Also, I've replaced a lot of the boxes blocking this level out with actual assets. Some playtesters really struggled with these rotating rings, so rather than keeping it a frustrating timing mechanic, I decided to change this into a gravity orb for some fun, low challenge movement mechanics. Concepted the boss you'll get the charge attack from, and started modeling and animating it. And once you get the charge attack, it has much cooler visuals and sound effects. I had fun animating lightning with shape keys. The checkpoints display the source code for interacting with checkpoints, for some fun meta-level nonsense. The grapple physics have been tweaked to behave a bit more like swinging on a rope, but still have some of the gravity acceleration properties. If you're grappling away from a hazard, it won't kill you. This reduces frustration caused by dying from your toes just barely touching a laser as you're swinging over it. The grapple has a turn radius while in flight, so it can't instantly turn 180 degrees. And, since it's been taking me so long to actually finish this video, I've added some more grapple swinging animations and fixed the attachment point for the beam effect. I created higher poly textured versions of some assets and imported them into the Unreal Engine to be used for IWOCon, a virtual convention. The robot even has a little trigger for some sounds and animations. I also created a set of monitors and a fancy shader to scroll through the screenshots. I had to port over my crystal shaders as well. The banner I designed for a physical convention, which was cancelled due to COVID-19, will now finally see the light of day. IWOCon will probably be out by the time I finish this video, so go grab it on Steam if you want to check out my booth. Added an animation for getting knocked back when you punch directly into the ground since it looked goofy with the normal punch down animation. Controller rumble intensity scales based on the velocity change at impact, so if you smack into something really hard, you'll have more rumble than a light landing. The slide rumble is randomized to feel more natural, rather than having a consistent frequency. If you use a keyboard, the rumble is automatically disabled, so you don't have to deal with this rattle. I tweaked the particles for the portal, and added some lightning effects during the transition. Iterated on the rocks, added window details, and improved the radio mask crush animation in this level. Scaled the cinematic character hands down and re-rigged the fingers to use IK to have better control over things like handling photographs. Bit by bit, the cinematic opening sequence is starting to take shape, but it's still pretty rough. I iterated on the background of the first family photograph. The others are in various stages of completion. I'm also continuing my quest to draw a thousand faces for practice though it's difficult to find time to draw. I created a tool to quickly prototype platforms of arbitrary shapes. It creates both a mesh and collision. Tweaked the fog shader to allow tall meshes to blend into the sky. Created a more detailed crane mesh that the player can interact with. Added some new collapsed building meshes to the city. 
New jump particles are spawned after each jump to avoid particles disappearing when jumping too quickly. A new collectible type. Started on a new music track for a moment of realization. Turns out dynamic tempo is a real nightmare to deal with. Fixed a bug where the enemies that were rendering on this monitor could, um, still kill you? That was fun. Created a vault door that can be bent up and knocked loose. Plus some other in-game stuff I don't want to spoil. Added preview thumbnails to the practice level selection. Added a menu option to change the locale setting. Added notifications to remind players to hold jump if they fail to jump repeatedly. I was really impressed with the results I'd gotten tinkering with Art Breeder, so I thought I might be able to sculpt a rough face, pose it with the lighting I wanted, and make AI do some magic, but, uh, yikes. I've started working on the grapple boss. This is an early look at what you'll fight in order to unlock the grapple swinging ability. It can swing around, grab you, and has an energy field that prevents you from punching it repeatedly up close for an easy win. What you're hearing is also the start of a music track for the battle. The grapple can no longer go through lasers, but it can grab switches, so hopefully it can build some cool mechanics around that. I've also fixed the way it attaches to moving objects, so now you can sling yourself around using moving platforms for extra momentum. The player movement relative to moving objects has been dialed in as well, and functions even at extreme velocities. Start it on a new level where you have to quickly move through a hole melted into a mountain before the laser has a chance to fire again. But wait, there's more. That's right, it's been so long since I've put out the last Fist of the Forgotten devlog that I've made an entire other video game as a side project called Goop Loop. Goop Loop. It's a physics-based game that I originally built for the Ludum Duray Game Jam, which had the theme stuck in a loop. I took that literally and made a goop that sticks to a loop, providing a unique and challenging way to overcome obstacles. A loop within a loop? Is this meta? Oh, you were so close there, so close. There is in-game commentary as well. I improved an extended goop loop and put it up on Steam to get some experience launching a game and hopefully make a little income. If you'd like to support me, consider buying it, or at least add Fist of the Forgotten to your Steam wishlist. Speaking of supporting me, check out all these awesome people. Many of them have been patrons for a while and I really appreciate the financial support. It's super difficult to make enough money as an indie dev to cover the cost of living, so this helps a lot and I really appreciate it. There's lots of new stuff that I haven't recorded in this video, so maybe smash some of those buttons down there so you don't miss any updates, you know the drill. You can also sign up for the mailing lists on fistoftheforgotten.com if you don't want to miss any big news. And you might get an alpha key as well.